After successfully connecting the shutter cable to the Movi M5 to use with the uh, Spectrum DX8 uh, transmitter, and in this case the GH4, um, of course it's the same principles if you want to use it for Canon or Nikon shutter cables or even Sony's. Um, I just wanted to do, do a quick video review and a guide of how I did that so maybe it might help other guys um, out there trying to do the same thing. Just to go through some of the tools that you'll be needing, um, I've got your standard satellite receiver, DSM-X, uh, for the Movi. Then, um, in this instance, I have an AR8000 receiver with a satellite. Now, I've actually worked out that you don't need the satellite receiver, the second satellite receiver, for it to work. However, it's a little bit more of a, uh, a few steps to get it working. But I can go through that also. Um, you'll need a standard bind cable, um, servo lead, approximately 30 centimeters. Um, this will power the receiver. And it's basically your standard servo lead. I've just taken out the data cable, which is either the yellow or the white cable uh, from that. Uh, then you'll need your shutter cable that you're going to use. In this instance, uh, for the GH4, I've got your 2.5mm um, length cable, which then goes into a servo cable, um, which plugs into the receiving end. Um, I've also got a uh, small screwdriver, T6, uh, to be exact the size. That's for um, undoing the plate to get to the S-Bus port on the Movi. A couple zip ties. I've also got a uh, 4.8 volt um, battery just to power the receiver for binding and for um, testing out to make sure that it's all going well. Uh, I've got the a servo as well um, to test the switch. This is the easiest way I've found to, um, to test it rather than trying to sh um, actually plug it into the camera because uh, you don't know if it's working or not all the time. So um, a servo is a good way to fail safe that testing. Starting from the very beginning, assuming that I haven't even bound the satellite receiver to the Movi yet, uh, let's just check that all the settings for the receiver are correct in the um, application itself. So we can go ahead and switch on the Movi. Let that get powered up and connect it to the app. Now it's uh, important to set the right settings here based on the resolution and also the, um, the type of satellite you'll be using. In this instance it's a DSM-X. Um, you could also use the DSM-2. Um, if you're going to use two satellite receivers, they both have to be the same, either DSM-2 or DSM-X. And based on the receiver, um, also uh, depends on what it is capable of um, using. So here you can see the radio type, it's actually on DSM-X already, and to 2048 uh, resolution. That's what this receiver uses, so that's good to use if you need to change it. You can use the fine tune to change the resolution and change between DSM-2 uh, right there. And once you've got that set, then you can write the settings. And uh, then you've got the correct settings in the movie stored. To quickly go through the basic principle of what we're trying to achieve here, um, the movie has seven channels in use, as far as I'm aware. And there's a free channel, which is um, by default the gear channel. So if you look on the receiver, you can see the gear channel there. Now I'm using the 8000 uh, receiver. I, I know that some people also are using the 6210 receiver. And that seems to be working for other people also. I guess it's just any receiver that has that gear channel, um, you'll be able to do it. So the servo cable for the shutter, uh, for the shutter will actually go into that gear channel. Um, and then the power will go to the receiver and that then should all work with the Movi and the shutter cable. First thing we have to do is to bind each satellite, uh, both satellites, to the DX8. To do so, um, you need to plug your bind plug into the bind input of the receiver and then you have to plug your power source into the uh, throttle port of the receiver. At the same time you do this, 
you want to hit the bind switch and turn on the DX8 from there and hold it down and you'll see that it's binding DSMX 11 milliseconds let it run you'll see there's a orange light on the satellite and an orange light on the receiver so that's bound so this is good to go now once you've done that you want to turn off the DX8 you want to power down the receiver keep the bind plug in you want to take out this satellite plug in the other satellite and do the exact same process so you plug the power into the throttle you've got two flashing lights hold down the bind turn your receiver on, uh, transmitter on sorry comes up it's binding DSMX 11 milliseconds wait for that to go you'll see the two orange lights and now it's all good to go. To test this, um, you can unplug your satellite here and plug it in and you should have an orange light on both. Now this means both these satellites are now bound to the DX8 um, and this receiver is also bound to the DX8. Once we now have both satellites uh, bound to the transmitter and we've got the receiver bound we can go ahead and test the gear channel um, as I mentioned before I have this uh, servo which we will plug into the gear channel uh, to test this so you give the receiver some power you'll see both orange lights pop up on the satellite and the receiver and uh, the gear channel which is this uh, back left should um, reverse the direction of the servo once switched. So we can go ahead and plug the servo into the gear channel as so and we can test that gear channel and it's hard to see but it is reversing as it should. Now we can unplug the gear and we can go ahead and switch the Movi on. So we've tested the gear channel works, now we can go ahead and turn on the Movi and plug the satellite receiver into the Movi directly now like that. You'll see an orange light pop straight up again and now you can go ahead and test all the Movi controls. You've got the pan, you've got the tilt, all that's working correctly. You've got your mode switch here which goes back into majestic mode and then turns the motors off. So you've got everything's working correctly as it should so then um, you can go ahead and plug the servo cable and power up the receiver and put this back into the gear and that is its own independent system but it's still bound to this transmitter and as you can see the gear channel is moving the uh, servo back to front so all that's working correctly now so now it's just a matter of replacing the gear um, input with the servo switch and you're good to go that it's now reversing and working so it's possible to do it with the one satellite but you have to go through that step every time you turn on the Mobi which is a bit of a pain but it, it, uh, it serves its purpose if you only have the one satellite receiver. Now that everything is bound and tested, um, it's up to uh, mounting the receiver somewhere on the Movi and giving it power. Now the Spectrum receiver can receive an input of um, about 4 volts to 9 volts, if I remember correctly. So um, anything in between that voltage range is good for that. Um, using Spectrum equipment you have the benefit of having this S-Bus port um, on the Movi that is able to be utilized for 5 volt output power. Now to do so you need to uh, take off this cover plate um, to expose the wires underneath there and that's where this servo uh, cable comes into play. Uh, approximately 30 centimeters and you'll use that to 
plug into the SBUS port um, on here after the plate's been taken off. I'm using a uh, T6 screwdriver, um, so it's a torque screw to undo these screws here. They're not very tight, so you don't need to uh, give them too much force, otherwise you'll strip the, um, the screws. So after you've exposed the, uh, the wires underneath, you can see that uh, this is where the satellite gets connected into the spectrum input, and uh, you've also got this SBUS input. Now we'll get our Sobo cable, and we'll plug that into the SBUS input here, like so. So you've got your ground on the far left and your uh, positive in the middle. This will give out the uh, 5 volts of power. Once you've got that inputted, it's a simply a matter of doing a nice neat cable job again, back through the loops that they've created underneath the plate, and putting the cover back on. Obviously being very careful not to pinch the wires uh, once you put the cable back on. Um, And again, you don't need to do these screws up very tightly. Okay, and there we have it. So now you can see I have nice free movement here. There's nothing getting pinched in the cabling underneath here. Now I have the servo cable which will serve as the um, 5 volts for the receiver. Now when it comes to mounting on the Mobi, I try and keep all my accessories on uh, the left hand side of the Mobi um, because it kind of counterweights on this motor and then any other uh, weighting you can adjust with the camera positioning left and right. So you see I have my video, um, analog video 5.8 gigahertz transmitter here and I've got my um, HDMI to AV converter here all sitting on the left hand side so we'll go with the same positioning for the receiver just using a bit of velcro uh, place the receiver in this position and having the satellite coming over on the other side so approximately here just as long as this cable is nice and out of the way of everything and then uh, underneath the Movi I've just snipped the one cable tie that they had here um, to nice and neatly place this cable underneath, zip tie it up, and then we can plug it in uh, using the, uh, the bind data input, like so. And so that will give us the 5 volts of power once the movie's turned on. So after mounting the receiver to the movie, um, you can see here I've just tidied up the cables by adding a couple cable ties here and here and it runs up um, to give the receiver some power on this side. Then on the other side I have the uh, satellite just sitting there, again, just with some Velcro. Uh, now once everything's set up like this, we can go ahead and turn the Mobi on and let it get powered up. At the same time we can switch on our uh, transmitter and now you can see that the uh, orange light is on the Movi satellite it's on the receiver and it also should be on the other side on the other satellite so you can now see that everything's working great the Movi is controlling correctly now it's just a matter of turning the camera on plugging in your shutter cable, um, always remembering that the ground is on the top of these inputs on spectrum receivers, so the black cable goes up and you can plug that into the gear channel, like so. And now the other end, which is the shutter, you can plug into the uh, correct spot on the camera, difficult to do this with one hand. Okay, 
So now if we can test it out. So if we get a nice view here and then hit your shutter switch you can see that the recording has actually started and flick it off again on and off now we can test um, if we change modes to let's go photo mode and again um, clicking the gear channel everything seems to be working so that was um, a quick de demonstration of uh, how I managed to uh, put a second receiver onto the Movi M5. I guess the same principles would work with the Movi M10. I don't own one myself, um, but I'm pretty sure from reading on forums and everything else that it has the same SBUS port, same procedure, um, can be used to power the receiver. And hopefully this helps anyone else trying to um, solve the same problem. Thanks.